Hello, I'm Michael Toder, and I'm here about at one half hour away from the start of Buster Poindexter's concert here on Sug Harbor's grounds. And uh, I got one question to ask this crowd that's standing behind me. Guys, how you feeling? Hot, hot, hot! Hello, my name is Michael Toder, and you're watching Spotlight on the Arts. I'm here in the dressing room of a man who really needs no introduction. If you've been to a catered affair in the past 10 years, you've heard his music and you know his song, Hot, 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 and along with that, I'm proud to introduce Mr. Buster Poindexter. Hi, Michael. How are you? Okay, thank you very much for uh, taking your time out to do this. Um, as everybody knows, pretty much on Staten Island, and you're a Staten Island native, and uh, you come back every year to do a show here at Snug Harbor. Uh, is there any comfort in doing a show on, on Staten Island as opposed to being out on the road and, and doing a show? I mean, do you find it? Oh, it's really nice to play here. Um, you know, we just came over on the ferry boat, actually, so that was, I hadn't been on that in a couple of years, so that was nice. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's nice to come back to the home the homeboy neighborhood and uh, do my thing here, you know? Uh -huh. Get a jam going. I enjoy it. <laughs> do you find the crowd is a little different when, when you hear them more receptive to you? Uh, like, they really... Well, whenever you do one of these things, like on the green, you know, on the lawn kind of a thing, you get, it's nice because you get all generations, and uh, mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. You know, you get little kids, you get grandparents and everybody in between. <laughs> uh -huh. I enjoy that. Uh-huh. Now, you grew up in, in West Brighton, mm -hmm. and... Uh, we went to Port Richmond High School. I mean, did, is that where you got your start? Is that where you, you finally decided, hey, this is what I want to do? Were there yeah. any influences in high school? Or? Yeah, I started singing in bands when I was about 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. That was a long time ago. And uh, guys in my neighborhood, we had a band in West Brighton, the Vagabond Missionaries. Uh -huh. And uh, we would play at the high school dances and parties and stuff like that, Battle of the Bands. Uh-huh. Things like that. Uh -huh. Were there any influences? Who do you admire as a as a musician, uh, as something like that? Would that that your that were your inspirations to keep going? When yeah. then? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I used to, you know, we we used to do songs like uh, Wilson Pickett songs and stuff uh -huh. like that in those days. You know. Uh huh. And then you got involved with the New York Dolls. Uh, you started that, or? Yeah. Well, I uh, there was a couple of those guys. They had a band going, and I joined up with them. And then some other guys joined up, and. Uh, that was about 73, I guess. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And when did Buster Poindexter, when did David Johansson become Buster Poindexter? Had, what's the story behind that? I started doing that about 10 years ago. Um, I think, maybe more. About approximately 10 years ago. Um, there was a bar in my neighborhood. I was living in Gramercy Park in the city, and uh, there was a bar named Tramps. Mm -hmm. And I used to hang out there when I wasn't, you know, on the road. And... Uh, Mondays, they didn't have a band, so I decided I was going to do this little act for mm -hmm. like four Mondays, uh -huh. just for fun, you know, and do songs that were like old kind of R&B songs and uh, jump blues songs and calypsos and, all, you know, all different kinds of music. And uh, I did it, and then it became such a hit that I figured, you know, like, I don't have to be schlepping all over the country here. I can, like, work here and <laughs> make a nice living, so... I started working there three nights a week, and I was still doing the Johansson show at the same time. And then after a while, I just kind of got into doing Buster because RCA wanted to make a record and stuff like that. So I just kind of let the other thing kind of slip away for a while <laughs> and concentrated on doing Buster, which was great for me because um, 
you know, the different kinds of music I wanted to do, I could do them all as as Buster, you know. People didn't have these expectations to for me to do, uh, you know, the hits so that I had made as Joe Hansen or with the Dolls, right. you know. So th right. it was a nice kind of liberating experience for me. Uh -huh. Now, with every interview I'm sure that you've done since this song became a hit, I mean, how does it feel to know that, like, at every wedding or catered affair that I was hot, hot, hot is is the song, you know, that, that's, that's played. You can't go to a catered affair without hearing it. Yeah. I mean, did, what, what, how did that song happen? I mean... I, I didn't write that song. I heard it in the Caribbean. I was down there, and there were, the, a guy named Arrow, who's a, he's from Montserrat, was singing it. And uh, I picked it up from him and recorded it. Uh-huh. And did he you... He became hear, a very rich man from that song. And did you, <laughs> and did you have any idea, like, you know, this is... No, I had, I had no idea it would it would be that popular no uh -huh. I you know I never think if anything's gonna be popular anyway right. sometimes I th when I write a song or something I think oh this might be a hit but I don't really dwell on it you know mm -hmm. I just keep on doing my work and uh -huh. and then sometimes you know something hits a universal chord and everybody can relate to it so uh -huh. that's nice so I was at a wedding for my nephew a couple of months well, actually it was last summer and the band was playing it and I got up and sang with them that was kind of <laughs> fun uh-huh uh huh. Now you've also broken away and, and you've done some films. Uh, what do you prefer? Well, I like you know I like being in a band because I have a big band. You know, there's like 13 of us in a band, and then there's about four or five others who work putting the show together. And um, we've been together for about 10 years now, mm -hmm. so it's very nice to be in a group of people and kind of grow together. You know, it's it's kind of like a an extended family. Uh huh. And that's really nice, but uh, you have to pay them all, you know? Right. And when you make a movie, you don't have to pay all those people. Uh -huh. So it's nice every once in a while to do a movie and uh, right. get some money and, you get know, money buy a car own. or something, you know. <laughs> you know, now, you know. Now, speaking of film, I mean, I, I wanted to say one thing we have in, uh, in common is you had done a film called Tales from the Dark Side with Bill Hickey, was in your segment. Yeah. And uh, I had studied with him at HB Studio for a number of years. Um, what is your experience with him? Well, um, I just loved the guy, you know. I, I remember the first day we were on the set, and it was we were share, we were shooting up in Riverdale, and we were going to share a car home, and uh, I came out to the car, and he was already in it, and he, I opened the door, and he said, "You don't get in this car unless you smoke." <laughs> well, he, he, you know, he's got he's always had the parliaments in the Evian, and I didn't think you'd be able to get him out of his hand. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed working with him. I think he's a great, great actor, you know, and I've always loved him, like, from Pritzi's Honor and stuff uh -huh. like that. He's, and, he's um, just one of the greats. Yeah, yeah, it and it took a really long time for him to really get noticed. I mean, it was Pritzi's Honor that really brought him to, yeah. uh, to, to somebody's name, and they started doing Wings and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but he was in a lot of Broadway shows in the 60s. And, you know, you, if you ever see old shows like Naked City and stuff like that, right. He'll be like the guest villain when he was young. But even when he was young, he was old. Uh -huh. <laughs> but he used to be a very cool cat, you know, with the, the button-down hat and the leather jacket. The yeah, he was like a very cool cat. <laughs> now, um, you, you also were in the Saturday Night Live band, correct? Yeah, I sang and with them for a season, yeah. For one season. Yeah. And did that have any... Um, I mean, because you were also in Scrooge with Bill Murray, and was right. that where you made your contacts with him? Or, I mean, no, what was that I experience I, like? I don't know which one I did first. Oh, I guess I did Saturday Night Live first. No, I didn't meet Bill Murray then. Um, he, I was, I used to do. Well, I still do. I play at the Bottom Line about once a month, but we used to play there every week. And he just started showing up, and he came to the show. I guess about three or four weeks in a row, and then he came backstage and said uh, he was making this movie and he wanted me to try out for it. And then the next week he brought the director and. I went and I, you know, I had to audition for it, but I got the part and then uh, went out to L.A. and shot that. That was great. Was that the first movie you'd done? I had done a small movie before that called uh, Candy Mountain with uh, Rudy Wurlitzer and Robert Frank. And uh, this was the first kind of Hollywood movie I had done. Uh -huh. You ever feel a sense of deja vu? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, but especially when I come to Staten Island. Um, but Bill was good. He taught me a lot of the ropes, you know, like uh, when they call lunch, break away from the pack early and get in the front of the line, you know, stuff like that. Good movie acting tips. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And um, uh, is there a word of advice that you could give, if, you know, for uh, bands that are out there or a guy trying to 
breaking into music business. Uh, is there is there uh, something that you could say that would really um, help? Well, them or, uh, you know, if you're a person like me, like uh, I had a main, you know, my main uh, prerogative when I was a kid was how can I get through life without working? You know, that was the most <laughs> important thing to me. So, uh, you know, I got into a band and started uh, doing that, and I kind of just stuck with it, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of guys, they gave up, they got jobs. Right. I prayed for them, but uh, <laughs> it didn't work out for them. I managed to stick to my guns, uh -huh. and, uh, you know, I say you don't work, but you really do work a lot. But uh, you know what the great thing about it is? You, you don't do the same job every day, you right. know? And I, I like that. If I had to get up and go to the same job every day, I don't know, I'm probably wind up like one of those post office guys. Right, right. But I mean, as well as, I mean, you know, I had gone out when I, I mean, I had pursued an acting career for a while and then, you know, been eating tuna fish out of a can for weeks, you know, the, I mean, the starving years that, you know, eventually I got a regular job and, and was one of those people that got out of it. But um, how did you bring, get yourself past those years? I mean, everybody has them. Yeah. Well, I starved for a lot of years, you know, and uh, I don't know, I just stuck to it. I didn't, you know, I never really worried about the, uh, the reward so much as doing the work because I love doing the work, you know, and if you put that first and not really worry about the consequences or, you know, or, or what the result is going to be and just do the good work, I think eventually you're going to find a niche and certain people are going to understand and enjoy what you're doing. And finally, what's next for uh, Buster Poindexter? Well, we're making a record now. It's uh, very kind of Latin-oriented. I mean, even though it's in English and everything, but the beats are very Latin-oriented. We're doing merengue and uh, salsa and uh, mambo and all that kind of stuff. Bamba, plena. So we're working on that, and we'll put that out, and uh, hopefully it'll be a big hit. And uh -huh. We'll continue doing what we're doing. Even if it's not a hit, though, we'll continue doing what we're doing because we play live all the time and people like us. Uh -huh. We play at parties and oh, really? nightclubs and concerts. You know, we do different stuff all the time. We played at the opening of the World Cup soccer this year. We That's do a great. lot of great things, and it's always different, which, which is what I like. Any more films in the works? Uh, I just did a film called Bernsey's Last Call. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but uh, uh -huh. it's pretty good. All right, well, I know you've got to get to work, yeah. and you've got a sound check and a show to do tonight, yeah. and I'm going to be in the audience cheering you on. Okay, so great. I look forward to seeing it. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot, Michael. Bye-bye. I appreciate everybody. it. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Yeah.